to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Bryant alongside Kevin Robinson, track and field coach at the University of Memphis. And coach, let's start off with some really good news for, for track and field and for a, lot, a couple of sports at the University of Memphis. Uh, it was recently announced through GoTigersGo.com and the university. A really nice donation given to the school and it should end up benefiting you because it was uh, announced within these uh, plans in the strategic plan that some uh, some facility improvements for track. Uh, we're not sure the specifics a timetable yet, but I know it's got to be good news for you. Uh, I think it's it's great news for us. It's great news for the the institution. It's great news for the athletic department. Uh, the largest gift that we've ever received, uh, earmarked specifically for women's athletics. Uh, you know, I think it's a tremendous step in the right direction for. You know, kind of the vision that, that we have now for this program and moving forward. Um, you know, the prospect of that, uh, that donation um, going toward track and field in some capacities is, is remarkable. Um, you know, we definitely are in need of some help, and uh, I think this is a situation which will help get us at least into a more competitive uh, standing in terms of our facilities and, and what we have to offer. So, yeah, I think it's a great thing. And it's great for you because you've, you've been over there and, and seen the, the renovations of the FedEx Park and what they've done to uh, the football facilities and the softball facility has come up and the, and the new golf facility and now it looks like yours is going to be uh, next on the horizon. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, you know, I've been over there for a long time and it seems like everything around us has gotten better. And <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, at this point I feel like, you know, great things are happening. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, everything's really positive. So we just... Uh, Keep, keep doing what we're doing, and, and, and I think things are going to get better. It's good for recruiting. It's another thing you can go out and talk to athletes about. Absolutely. You know, we, uh, having your own space uh, is, is really something that's important to a program. And when we have recruits in and we can show them a, a well-kept facility that's competitive, um, obviously the product that we have in our, in our program is already there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we continue to add to that product with improving the facilities and things like that, it's only going to bolster our recruiting efforts. Coach, let's now take a look at your, your teams this year, men's and women's. Let's talk about the, uh, the men's team. I know you, you've lost a couple of key uh, seniors, but you return a lot of experience. I know you're excited about the prospects. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about where we're at. Um, you know, we, we lost Carlos Pujats and we lost Robert Jackson, both of whom were national qualifiers, uh, All-Americans. Uh, they were key contributors for us for a long period of time. Um, we lost Casey Carl and Javelin, who was a you know a very good athlete for us. So, you know, like I told you earlier, we we don't replace guys like that. We're, we're going to miss them. They're they're irreplaceable. But what what we've done, I feel like, is we've created a team that's very deep in in uh, most of the events. Uh, we we have weapons that I feel like can contribute uh, in, in almost every event that we're going to field. So I feel like we're deep. I feel like we've got more experience. Uh, I know that we're hungry. Um, last year we sat in first place for most of the outdoor championships only to lose it in the last couple of events. The returning group didn't like that. They didn't enjoy it and they don't want to be in that position again. And, um, you know, I think that's kind of been a, a, a motivational tool that we've been able to utilize is guys, look, we don't want to be in that situation again. And they know it and they don't want it either. So the training this fall has been great. Uh, for the most part, we've stayed healthy. Uh, I know they're excited to compete, they're ready to go out and prove themselves, they're ready to go out and beat up on somebody else. And uh, you know, I'm very optimistic uh, about the chances for this program. You've got to feel good and like you said, optimist optimistic because you've got the talent, you've got the experience and as you just said, they're, they're a highly motivated bunch so you don't have to worry about going out there and having to motivate them at practice. Yeah, the thing with this group of men is I, I don't have to get them fired up, I don't have to have a rah-rah speech, uh, I've got to calm them down and take them down a little bit so that because they get so geared up and so amped up to go out there and compete you know sometimes we've just got to relax a little bit um, and that's one thing that we're looking for this weekend is we know the talent is there what I'm looking for is competitive composure the, the athletes need to be able to compose themselves and compete the way that we train on a daily basis and when we get to that level then we're going to be a very dangerous team Let's move over and talk about the women. And when we started doing these interviews a few years ago, that was the program you're trying to get up and running. And it seems you've got them to a spot now. Not only are they competitive, but you've got experience coming back now. Yeah, we, uh, we only lost, uh, I believe, two, two girls from last year's squad. Um, and, and it was a very, very small point tally that, that they contributed. 
Um, so all the girls that we have returning plus the girls that we've brought in, um, it's, it's a similar situation to the men's program. Um, they're hungry, they're motivated. Um, it's a group of kids that, that doesn't want to be complacent. They don't want to settle for mediocrity. Um, they want to be competitive, they want to win, and they're training their butts off and, you know, they're, they're great, great kids. So, um, again, as I said with the men's team, if the women can come in with some competitive maturity, some competitive composure, then I feel like they're going to do a very, very good job. Um, but we just have to continue to mature at the level that we want to compete at. Uh, if we can do that, we'll be very dangerous. Talk about the women's uh, program as far as uh, the men are pretty even across the board, you said. Is there a, an event they stand out in on the women's division, or are they, they pretty balanced out as well? Well, uh, I would say we, we've got a very good group of, of vaulters on the women's side. Um, we've got a good group of throws uh, athletes. Um, we return Maya, who you know, was third at the U.S. Junior Championships last year in the 400 hurdles. School record holder as a freshman. Same with Kayla in the 400. Our 4x4 four four team was uh, three-tenths of a second off making the national team last year. Um, so I feel like we've got, we've got a good mix. We've got depth. We've got balance. Um, we're not overladen in any one event, and we're not weak in any one event. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a balanced attack. And, I think that's what we need to have in terms of our conference performance. Uh, beyond that, going into the NCAA rankings, you know, we've got to have elite level performers. Um, but I think in terms of our conference uh, performance this year, I think we've got the right kind of team to be competitive. You've mentioned a couple times about the meet. Tell us about the meet going to be uh, coming up this weekend, Friday and Saturday. I know it's going to be a fairly large meet. Yeah, it'll be uh, enormous in terms of numbers and sheer teams. Um, they put that facility up in Birmingham to attract as many programs to the city as they could, and, and they're hosting huge meets. Um, you know, there'll probably be 30 to 35 teams at this meet alone. Um, it's a phenomenal facility with a hydraulically banked track, you know, so it gives the athletes a, a chance to compete on a world-class facility. And it also happens to be the same facility that we have our conference championship mm -hmm. on. So uh, it gives us a chance to, to kind of settle in and get used to that facility and get used to the surface. And um, I would say for, for me to say we're excited and motivated for this meet would be the understatement of the year. You know, you, we're ready. You've told me about this facility before. And have, have, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, were you there twice last year at that facility? We went there three times, okay. actually. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's a three hour ride for us. It's, it's not difficult in terms of, of travel. Um, it's convenient, it's a world-class facility. They've got great officiating. And uh, you know, there's, there's nothing negative about going there. Once you get done for there, kind of be the Christmas break, but you're not gonna get a huge break. Uh, early in January, you'll head up to Lexington. Yeah, we'll come back, uh, start practice January 7th. We've got about a week for, to prepare before uh, the Kentucky meet. And then once we hit that meet, we're, we're pretty much every week um, all the way through June. Um, so, you know, this, this meet this weekend, it gives us an opportunity to see where we're at, uh, some things we need to work on going into uh, the season starting in January. But once we hit that, we're, uh, we're off and running. All right, well, Coach, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting season with the men and the women. And, uh, I know the, the future looks good for the program. I hope so. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. <laughs> Thank you. That is Kevin Robinson, and I'm Jeff Brightwell for the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.